opposition leader Raila Odinga has termed President William Ruto's government to government oil deal as a grand scam full of mischief to rip off Kenyans through exorbitant fuel prices with part of the proceeds going into the pockets of unnamed persons within the government. Odinga in an address to the press at his Upper Hill offices claimed the Kenyan government has plunged the country into a fuel crisis occasioned by individuals in the executive who are using proxies to deal with three oil companies in Gulf countries. Stephen Leto now reports. Azimio leader Rilo Dinga says the government-to-government -government oil deal that was signed in April this year is a grand scam. Odinga saying Kenya did not sign any contract with Saudi Arabia or the United Arab Emirates, pointing out that only the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum signed a deal with state-owned petroleum companies in the Middle East. Why Ruto chose to characterize the deal as a government-to-government -government is the red flag that points to mischief in this deal. The cost of fuel shot up significantly after the deal. Why have things moved from bad to worse since the deal was signed? Well, the deal was a scam for which we now demand full disclosure and full accountability. It is corrupt and rotten to the core. It is state capture by Mr. Ruto and company, and a conspiracy against the country. Ruto's collapsing the country while feeding Kenyans on lullabies. Odinga says the deal is shrouded in secrecy, and today the supplier purchase agreement between the Middle East oil firms and their hand-picked distributors in Kenya has not been made public. End quote. The Azimio leader listed three oil marketing firms as companies of interest used by the oil barons to temper with prices by manipulating delivery debt ranges to maximize on prices. But in August this year, four months after the deal, the government allowed Oryx Energies to sell oil at prices that had been inflated by 17%. In the Ruto deal, Oryx is a supplier of diesel to other oil marketing companies in the country. The excuse was to delay in discharging fuel at the jetty. This shady business model is being deployed by all the companies that were retained in the Ruto deal. Odinga further claimed that the oil cartels, who are both inside and outside government, are swimming in billions accumulated from the extra charges. According to Odinga, the money meant for payment for oil sits in an escrow account in a local bank where it earns interest. Beneficiary of the accrued interest remains a shadow. We find that um, you are being charged 217 shillings, but the actual price be 800, uh, 187 shillings. Now, where we are not sure is how that 30 shillings is being distributed, who is the beneficiary? Ryla says the resultant high fuel prices have pushed Uganda from the Mombasa port to Dar es Salaam and Tanga, and this may cause a ripple effect leading to other countries such as South Sudan, Rwanda, and others to head the Tanzania way. Ryla says the departure of Uganda will adversely affect the Kenya pipeline company's profits as it is likely to lose up to 51% of its revenue. It's going to drive a number of oil marketing firms out of business, leading to job losses and loss of revenue for the government. The Azimio coalition wants the government to immediately cancel the G2G contract and ESCC to investigate the contract. Odinga further demands that government officials involved be surcharged and sacked. The Azimio leader wants full disclosure of the Saudi Arabia and UAE MOU with Kenya. He demands the lowering of taxes to 8% from the 16% in the Finance Act of 2023. Ryla says the three companies picked to spearhead the G2G deal do not pay the 30% corporate tax, costing the country billions in lost revenue. He wants answers on who is pocketing the unpaid corporate tax. Stephen Leto, Citizen TV.